coach for LSU. A lot of tools, and they all have energy, and that mirrors their head coach. During their shoot-around that went about an hour, maybe an hour and ten minutes, they never stopped once, never sat down. Full of energy, one side of the court to the other, and it's all because of that man right there. Matt McMahon was leading the way, and this, these players resemble the energy he's brought to practice. K.J. Williams will jump center. A 6'10 senior from Cleveland, Mississippi, by way of Murray State. LSU is in white. And the ruse of Kansas City in the dark uniforms. This is the first time these teams have ever played each other. LSU's opener. One thing that McMahon demands, and it's defense, and we see some early. Kick out for three. Off the mark. That went off the hands of Adam Miller. Let's take a look at Kansas City's lineup. You see it there. Allen, Mitchell, Idiaru, Mukeba, and Nagandu. And you will notice very quickly a lot of international names on this team. Victor, they've got a, a roster that's just loaded with players uh, internationally. Well, this, this might be the longest we've prepped for name pronunciation <laughs> when you have the international players they have on this roster. Hill and Miller, Wilkinson, Williams, and Reed get the start for LSU in the opener. But what, five countries represented internationally? Yes. You see the Ruse coming out in the zone defense. It's all man to man for LSU. Their first two defensive possessions a steal and a forced turnover. And the three ball is good by Wilkinson. The one in Wilkinson had 25 trays last year, 30 starts last year. 3-0 LSU gets the first bucket of the season against the Kansas City Ruse. Step back, Long Deuce is nestled home by Mukeba. Allen David Mukeba had 13 points and 12 rebounds in that loss against Lincoln. That was a deep deuce. He was one for six from three-point range a couple of nights ago. This for three. Yes, from the corner. There's the sharpshooter, Adam Miller. Boy, and that's a young man who has been waiting to shoot basketball. I mean, it's been almost 20 months since he's played ball. Remember, he transferred in from Illinois, missed all of last year when he blew his ACL before the season got underway. So he has been chomping at the bit to get on the floor and see some live action. Miller pulls off the rebound and is fouled in backcourt. And you're right, Victor. It's, it's a long, long trip in the boneyard for him after that knee injury but he's back he's in full health and he is certainly one of the better outcourt shooters for lsu he can light it up as you take a look at the last defensive possession on that jump shot that falls short and there's miller the man we're talking about in the middle going for the rebound and gets fouled on the arm so right after hitting his first three of his lsu career he draws the foul Justice Hill walks it up at point guard. He started every game at Murray State last year. He's a three-point shooter himself. He had 63 of them a year ago. Tigers work it down low, get the bucket, and a free throw coming. Great concentration here by Jalen Reed. Watch as he gets it down in the paint as Wilkinson finds him. Then he has to avoid the defender. Gets hit with the knee and going off balance. He's strong enough and able enough to focus it and put it in there. The 6'10", 230-pound freshman out of Jackson, Mississippi. And Nagandu has made back-to-back -back fouls, so he's on the bench now. That's his second foul early in this game. Here's Reed, the freshman from Jackson, Mississippi. Stands 6'10", gets the roll, and a three-point play for him the old-fashioned way. He's making his LSU and SEC debut, but it's not an SEC debut for his family. His dad was an all-SEC player for four years at Ole Miss. Yes, he was. Quite the player. The runner won't go. A tip is good after the miss by Idiaru. Precious Idiaru. He's got a twin brother on the team. Tigers bang another one home from three-point range. Nice job by Wilkinson set up in the corner. Nobody was down there to guard him. Just a quick release. A couple of buckets for Wilkinson from, or rather the first from Wilkinson from that range, and a three-point struck by Mitchell. Raekwondus Mitchell, a 6'5 graduate student from Blaine, Minnesota. 
He's had quite the journey in his college basketball season. He's played at Illinois, Chicago, Ontario Junior College, and Idaho. 4-3, left side, a little bit long from Wilkinson. Three Tigers in the scoring column in the early going. That's rejected, slapped out of there by Jalen Reed. Reed brings it down, wards off the big guy. He's blocked from behind by Idiaru. You took it away from me, I'll do the same to you. Not a bad job by Reed to show some handle, but tried to take it all the way into the basket. That was size against size. LSU leading 12-7 against the Ruse, the Summit League opponent. These teams are meeting for the first time. And we'll take a timeout right here with 15-43. Remaining in the first half before a very nice opening night crowd here in Bay last year. You mentioned off the top, too, how he's here literally building this roster from scratch at LSU. Well, he put the rosters together at Murray State, won 70% of his games while the yeah. head coach at Murray State. And in the last five years, he went 124 and 36. Yeah, one of the best records in the country. Williams comes from a long way to slap that one out. These big guys for both sides are angular and quick. Watch Wilkerson. Wilkerson gets knocked out of the way out of the lane, and he gets some help by his teammate when he comes over there, and K.J. Williams takes care of it to help his teammate out. Victor, you talked about roster building at Murray State. McMahon and his group signed 13 players in 48 days when they got to LSU last spring. That's a whole lot of signatures in a short period of time. I asked him today at shoot-around if he had thought about the fact that how unique this is that he literally built a squad from scratch. When he got to Baton Rouge, there were no active players around. Everybody was leaving or transferring or looking to get out. He got three players back and then went out and got everybody else. He said, you know, maybe the only time I've ever heard of this happen. It's such a unique situation, but I've, quite honestly, I've been so busy putting this together, I haven't stopped to think about that. Well, 13 players in 48 days is what LSU accumulated last spring. Nice ball movement by the Ruse. Not able to get a couple of decent shots to go down. Plenty of time on the shot clock after the reset. And a reverse layup with a lot of spin is good by Mitchell. Raquandis Mitchell, a 6'5 graduate student from Blaine, Minnesota. Had 13 points and five rebounds in the loss to Lincoln a couple of nights ago. You see they're looking to double team on the sides, try to get LSU in a trap and spread that zone defense. And that's the problem. If you don't stop the ball and you swing it around, all it takes is two guys to get out of position trying to miss on a trap, and now the offense has the advantage. And once again, LSU found the sharpshooter and Miller in the corner. That's his second three ball. Tigers by six in the early going. We have played nearly six minutes in the first half. You won't see a lot of zone defense out of this LSU team or any team coached by McMahon. Great hustle defensively to keep it alive momentarily. Miller went down and saved it, and LSU very active defensively. Take a look at the hustle on the defensive end. LSU already has a five-second violation on defense, forcing a turnover, and now the shot clock violation. Great hustle on the defensive end and that tough man-to-man -to -man defense that Matt McMahon works on. They spent about 30 minutes on it today during the shoot-around prepping for what they were going to do when it came to switching off and cutting through screens. And had everybody on the LSU bench applauding after that effort. Fountain drops it off late. There's a collision and an offensive foul. And Derek Fountain just waited too long to drop that one off. He had the pass over the defense, had a two-on-one situation, drop it off to his teammate earlier across the lane. He could have avoided that charge. Fountain is a junior. He stands 6'10". He started his career at Mississippi State. He's out of Holly Springs, Mississippi. That's his second foul. It was the first LSU turnover. Victor, last year at Murray State, that team averaged only 16 seconds per possession and plays almost exclusively man-to-man, -man, so it's controlled, but it's up-tempo at the same time. 
Kick out three, left side, plenty of time to shoot it. And Mukeba knocks it down. The sophomore from Belgium. That's a 6-7 forward walking out there and calmly knocking that one down. 15-12, close ball game early. Miller fakes right, waves it around left, finds a teammate on the left side. Miller takes the kickback pass, fakes left, dribbles right. Remember, he's left-handed. Dumps it off down low, and the power layup won't go. Lots of work by LSU on the offensive glass, but nothing to show for it yet. Yeah, K.J. Williams will try to earn it at the stripe now. Kendall Coleman down there in the paint trying to fight for the loose ball. Miller with the drive and then the dish when he came through the lane. There's the drop off. Tries to shoulder his way in. It's a little too hard, but you see him keep it alive. And there's K.J. Williams on the other end. He winds up drawing the foul on all of the bodies. And he'll go to the free throw line where last year when he was at Murray State, shot 70% from the line where he averaged 18 points a game. And eight and a half rebounds. He was the Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year. That's his first point in an LSU uniform. 6-10 forward. He comes from Mississippi, Cleveland, Mississippi. 27 career double-doubles. 84 times he has reached double figures in scoring in his career. And he was a, a, an all-SEC second-team preseason selection. That sounds like a lot of... A lot of accolades when you're the Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year and the leading scorer. And, of yeah. course, one of those leaders on the floor for Matt McMahon because he knows McMahon's system, having played for him at Murray State. Kendall Coleman in the game now for LSU. LSU by five, and it's taken away. Good hands by Williams. That's four turnovers. Late kick out, right side, open three, just a little bit long by Wilk, by uh, Wilkinson. But it will stay with the Tigers, 20 on the shot clock, 12.37 to go in the first half. Williams loops it up, bounces off the back iron, hits the front iron, saved and then thrown away. Allen on the move with the left hand too high off the glass. LSU clears the defensive rebound. And out in front for the two-handed plus is Hill. Well, it started on the other end with defense, and that was when Wilkinson timed his jump. He knew it was one-on-one, -on -one, and instead of fouling, he slowed his run down to time the leap with the shot that made the layup go long, and that will let the Tigers on a break the other way. Justice Hill stands six feet tall. He also is from Murray State. He is a tremendous leaper, though. And he flushed that one easily with two hands. There's a good look at him right there. The point guard also transferred from Murray. 13 and a half points a game, five assists a game last year at Murray State. He was third on the team in scoring. Yeah, there's a bunch of production from Murray State yeah. that's now on the court in Baton Rouge. Mitchell converts the first free throw. LSU is four for six in three-point shooting. Kansas City is two for six. That pretty much is the difference in the game. Mitchell makes it a five-point game in favor of LSU with 12 minutes to play in the opening period on opening night for the LSU Tigers. Reed sets a high pick. Williams slings it in to Williams, and that ball is too high off the glass. Couldn't get it to go. KJ would like to have that opportunity back. Three-point shot comes up short into the hands of Allen. That was short because Luke Cable was out there in his face. Had a chance to drive the lane, but instead forced a three, and that was a bad three that was missed there by Jeff. Uh, Jevin Sullivan. He's out of Elkhart, Iowa. And a foul will put Trey Hannibal at the free throw line. He's a 6'2 senior from Elliott, South Carolina by way of Murray State. Let's take a timeout here and go back and look at Justice Hill finish 
on the fast break pass. Justice Hill with a two-handed view. That means that we're doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball, even though he'll have some when there are breakaways, but he likes to see that balance with the assists and getting teams into their offense. It means they're being very efficient. Hannibal misses the free throw. Last year, Murray State, it was a 30-game winner, was 12th in the nation in offensive efficiency and 13th in the nation in defensive efficiency. That'll win you 30 games. Well, they assisted on more than 50% of their field goals made last year on that 31-3 Murray State team. Mitchell swings around, kicks it back to McCaba. Entry pass goes down on the left block. Good defense by the Tigers on the interior. Shot clock at six. Shot clock at three. Shot clock at one. Shot clock expires. That is turnover number five. And, Victor, you can hear the tennis shoes defensively squeaking all over the court. Well, you think of the turnovers now. You go first possession when LSU stole a pass, and then they went and they got a five-second call. That's the second now shot clock violation. So excellent defensive hustle for LSU causing those turnovers. LSU trying to add to a five-point lead. Williams at the top. Lobs it down in traffic. A dangerous pass, but it was collected by Reed. Williams shovels it off, and Williams flushes. Williams to Williams. That's a great dunk by K.J. Williams, who was open early in the bottom of the lane. They didn't see him, but then he made up for it with the drive. Defender had to make a choice. Stick with K.J., go after the ball. He went for the ball. That led to the easy dish and the dunk. That's two buckets for K.J. Williams. LSU on the move. And that one is looped in. This is the largest lead now. That one looped in by Justice Williams. The Ruse in the dark uniform on the ball. And there's a foul on the drive down the right side of the lane. It's going to put... Kansas City's Tyler Andrews at the free throw line. LSU leading 23 to 14. See, Mwani Wilkerson was almost looking for help there to see if he was going to have Jalen Reed ready. Then Jalen went to the outside to stick with his man. That opened up the lane. Wilkerson never got in front of him. In the game right now, Hannibal and Wilkinson, Justice Williams and K.J. Williams, and Reed for LSU. Second free throw coming from Tyler Andrews. He converts both, and those are his first two points of the night. The lead is seven for the Tigers. We slip under the midway point in the first half. A traveling, oh no, sideline violation. Wilkinson stepped on the uh, on the boundary. Just a little too spread out for Wilkinson on the right baseline. Heading towards the basket and planted to go. Stepped out of bounds. Just the third turnover for LSU. Very nice pass across the lane into the hands of Promise Idiaru. You've got Precious and Promise. And then on the other end, great look to get that pass to Trey Hannibal. A great concentration by Hannibal. That was like one-on-one -on -one with a wide receiver and a safety. That ball just dropped in. He was able to get it going to the basket, just couldn't get it to convert. He was fourth in scoring last year, one of the three from Murray State. Tyler Andrews committed his second foul. Hannibal averaged nine points and five rebounds a year ago. That's his first uh, entry into the scoring ledger as an LSU Tiger. Shot the ball really well, 52% from the floor. Yes, he did. A 
your three guys that came over from Murray State, Han- uh, uh, Hannibal shot 52%, Justice Hill shot 43%, K.J. Williams shot 54% from the floor. Goes back to those numbers we showed you earlier and the scoring and the production output that they brought with them at Baton Rouge. Well, the efficiency as well. LSU by seven. Mitchell leans over the dribble. Hannibal fights through a couple of picks. Now Mitchell goes low, and that ball is stripped out of his hands as he was about to lift off for the lay-in. See the Tiger defense trying to hedge to help him out. That's K.J. Williams, who then goes over to his man. Nice recovery by Hannibal. He will slap it out of bounds. Just under nine minutes to go. And a foul called on a little bit of a a little bit of contact on the wrist. Second foul on Hannibal. That's the quick hands going for the steal. You see him coming in on the right side. Clearly, you can see the ball was starting to go up. Yep. Also had uh, a little bit of a, a hand lock with the left hand. That would have been an offensive lineman's holding call. <laughs> Allen at the free throw line. Jamari Allen, a senior from Arden, North Carolina, by way of Cowley Community College. 14 points, 5 rebounds against Lincoln, but he was 0 for 3 from 3-point range. The Ruse and the Tigers for the first time in their basketball history. And Kansas City now is only 5 down. Sam Martin, a junior from Houston, is in the game in backcourt for Kansas City. See how much Kansas City is really stretching out that zone defense. Else who keep that ball moving, at some point they're going to find that opening. Hill misses without hitting the iron from deep range. Tigers are now four for eight. They've missed their last two three-pointers. A three-pointer from straight away will not fall for Idiaru. You got Adam Miller back in the game, too, and see if 44 can get going again from long range. Williams wards off a defender and got caught for it. You can see that left hand extended fully. He was pushing off, trying to establish the dribble lane, and uh, clearly got called for that one. Yeah, between the extension and then the lean into Sam Martin to try to initiate contract, uh, contact to go past him. That's why they called him for the offensive foul. Well, the Ruse can get closer than they've been in a long, long time with this possession. 25-20, LSU only by five. This for three. On line, but a little bit long. Rebound taken off by Adam Miller. Williams lost the dribble. Let's see who touched it last. It went off it, was, it was off of LSU. So let's take a timeout right here. 7.59 to go in the first half. Game one for the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge. It's 25-20. LSU for all. Four of nine. To take away those three-pointers inside the big line. They're four of nine. Really, statistically, the three-point advantage for the Tigers seems to be the difference in this game right now. And an offensive foul called on Kansas City. Hill will walk it up. Justice started every game for Murray State. He had 63 trays last year. Miller looking inside. And that ball is lost, stripped out of the hands of K.J. Williams. And a nice fast break bucket as Mukaba finishes for Kansas City. So Kansas big, City on an 8-2 to two run, Victor. Big long strides there, too, taking off at the free throw line and taking two big steps to get up to the rim. 25-22. LSU a bit out of offensive rhythm the last couple of minutes. That one rolls. It hits everything but does not go through the net. A miss by Miller. Mitchell 
Brings it up and leads his man too far. Allen was the intended target. Shamari Allen down on the low block, but it was just out of his reach. LSU will try to turn this turnover into points. And a bit of backcourt pressure now defensively for Kansas City, but it's loose. It's been two and a half minutes since LSU scored, and in that same time frame, three turnovers for the Tigers on offense, which is why Kansas City's been able to make this just a three-point game. Williams turns around, misses from 14 feet. Rebound actually hits the floor. That's grabbed by Mukaba. Not nearly the amount of passing that we saw earlier in the game by LSU's offense, too. Now it's just one or two passes and an entry where early we saw him moving the ball all over the floor and had that defense working, finding the open jump shot. Mitchell crosses over and lets it fly from distance. It's no good. And a reach-in foul is called. LSU may have caught a break on that as Miller was having trouble possessing the ball. He was chasing it down and was nicked for the foul. He tried to make a move around Shamari Allen. They got Allen for the reach end, just slapping at the ball. He's going to send Miller to the free throw line. K.J. Williams in the game now. It's we'll check the current lineup for LSU as we get a chance. It looks like Hill, Coleman, Wilkinson, K.J. Williams, and Miller. It may have been a little bit of a late arriving crowd, but Victor, there are not a lot of empty seats in the Maravich Center. Great crowd for opening night. Students were lined up on the Maravich Assembly Center ramps. An hour before the doors opened up. Good shot of the student section there behind the basket where Miller's about to shoot. Jevin Sullivan checks in. The freshman from Elkhart, Iowa. He played briefly earlier off the bench. And LSU's Adam Miller out of Peoria, Illinois. Will be at the free throw line when play resumes. This will be a one and one opportunity. Seven points for Miller now. He's the leading scorer for the Tigers in the game right now. He puts a lot of air under the free throw and drops the second one as well. So the Tigers regain their scant five-point lead. Allen holding it waist high. We come up on the six-minute mark. Six minutes left in the first half. Williams slapped that away as he reached cleanly over the shoulder and knocks that one out of bounds with his left hand. And it's great recognition by Miller, too, who turned around. He was in the corner, turned around, and saw that the Kansas City player had the ball on the baseline, had dribbled. He just joined his teammate, double team. Great recognition on the floor. Unless you're able to get in there and slap it. Promise Idiaru checks into the game, the freshman out of Germany. Step back, free throw, misses left, rebound hits the floor, and Promise Idiaru picks it up. Makes a little short pass to the top of the key for the jumper. There's one that place, one. I'm sorry, Lennox, one place that Kansas City has the advantage over LSU is rebounding. Uh -huh. Now 15-12 ruse on the boards. Wilkinson takes the baseline, kicks it across to a teammate. Three ball rolls away. Adam Miller thought he had that one go down. That's a difficult three with the momentum headed backward, and it doesn't get there. Miller puts it on the floor, hustles down to the elbow, kicks it out to Hill, passes to the corner for three. Bingo! Wilkinson now has nine points. Now LSU wants to try to get this up tempo just a little more. They have the clear advantage on fast break points, and when they're working on defense and they get Kansas City flooded, when they get that ball up and down the floor and move it a little bit, that's where they've had most of their success. Oh, a beautiful pass on a little bit of a delay cut. 
promise Idiaru was right there to handle it. Nobody was home defensively for the Tigers. That looked like KJ got turned around on that one. Never saw where his man went, but he's going to make up for it here. He lays it in. He ducked, faked, and ducked, and then put it home. The 6'10 senior from Cleveland, Mississippi. LSU leading by eight. Four minutes and some change remain in the first half. Mitchell fakes, takes it into the lane, knocked out of his hands. Well, the two twins get next to each other. The uh, twins from Germany, Precious and Promise Idiaru, I D I A R U. That time, Raquandis Mitchell got Miller to bite on the shot fake. And once Miller went up, he went right past him and drove the lane, forced LSU to collapse on the defensive side. That's where the foul came. We continue to mention these international names. And, Victor, how many languages did you tell me that, that this uh, team had represented on its roster? A dozen. A dozen. A dozen different languages. And they come from, what, five international players? Eight. Yes, eight international players, five countries. The lead is seven for the Tigers. Hill, stutter dribble, pulls up, shoots the looper, rolls and rolls and rolls and goes. Nice friendly home roll there for Justice Hill in the lane. Had Miller out on the wing. Nice archer shot there as he got into the lane. It's four for Hill to go along with five assists. And see Matt McMahon tell him to on the far side. He's waving. Let's go. He wants to see him get back up there and pick that pace up. Well, the Tigers can now regain a double-figure lead if they score on this possession. And Miller sitting in the corner. Half the shot clock to use. Hayes will casually walk away from it and restart the offense. Top of your screen is 44 out there on the wing. That's Miller. They go down low. And the shot from the left side will not fall for the Tigers. Less than three minutes to play. Allen leans over the dribble, guarded by Hill. There will be a free throw coming after the bucket. Raquandis Mitchell laid it in. He was fouled. And we'll take a timeout with 2.49 to go. A free throw will be coming for the Ruse when we return. LSU 34, Kansas City 27. 249 to go. This would complete the three-point play for Mitchell. And the Ruse are within six. Two things of note LSU is going to talk about at halftime. The fact that the Ruse are out-rebounding LSU is Miller from the right wing. It's off left. The Ruse out-rebounding LSU 18-16. And paint points that comes to defense. The Ruse have 12 paint points here in the first half. And a foul away from the ball. And I think it's Hayes. It's Cam Hayes on the foul. He started his career at North Carolina State. He's from Greensboro, North Carolina. More free throws coming for the Ruse. This will be Sam Martin looking for his first points of the night. He started nine games for the Ruse last year, played at 30 overall. Definitely a long range specialist, 45% from the floor, but shot 42% from the three point line. He's from Houston, and he's one of those rare guys now who doesn't have another school or two behind <laughs> his name. Kansas City is within four. 
two minutes and some change are left in the first half. Stick around at halftime. We've got an SEC Network produced look at the SEC basketball season as we just get everything started. Oh, that little left-handed hook wouldn't go. Williams, though, very strong, put his shoulder down. Did they get him on the yep. offensive foul? Offensive yep. for lead. Good job by LSU to keep that ball alive when it almost rolled in, and then Williams got possession again, but he leaned in with his shoulder before the shot. And the ruse drew the contact. Just like that, they can make this a one-point game. Here's a look again. Off the miss, the long rebound, and you see how he leans in with that left shoulder. Initiated the contact. Precious Idiaru returns to the lineup. Precious and his brother Promise are both on the court. That one goes down from the baseline as Promise Idiaru has made it a 7 nothing run, and he's got a chance to bring his team much closer. And the concentration he had to get that shot over Sean Phillips, a 7-foot freshman from Dayton, Ohio, who's got unbelievable length. But give credit to Promise Idiaru there on the concentration as he was going down and just shoot it up and over to get it to fall. LSU's largest lead has been nine points. Kansas City has never led in this game. And the Tigers may have caught a break there. Uh, Hill, Hill lost it, but there was a whistle. I'm with you. I think I think LSU got a break, and now they have to take advantage of it by making these free throws. Dribbling in between the trees, it looked like he lost control. Justice Hill. From Little Rock, Arkansas, by way of Murray State. Started every game for Murray State last year. Four points tonight. Good free throw shooter. Shot 75% from the line last year. This is his first attempt as a Tiger. A short. Promise Idiaru grabs the rebound. Murray State can tie or take its first lead with this, uh, excuse me. Kansas City can tie or take its first lead with this possession. This for three and the lead. Off the mark. Another Off offensive the rebound. Yep, a lot of them. Step back, 15-footer rolls out. That one looked good coming off the hands of Mitchell, but it didn't go down. And we've got contact, and I think this will be a blocking foul. It will be. And the foul is called on Shamari Allen. Allen had a nice day against Lincoln on Monday. He had 14 points and five rebounds. Here's Williams. Tigers need points any way they can get them right now. Justice Williams. The other Williams, KJ, kicked it out. And Hill is going back to the free throw line. But give credit to KJ Williams, who couldn't grab the offensive rebound. But I believe it was his left hand that he steered the ball away to a teammate. As you mentioned, LSU offensively now just sort of hit the brakes a little bit. They were in such good rhythm early, trying to push the tempo. Up against that zone defense, finding the open man, several passes, and all started to slow down a little bit. Now the offense has gone cold while the Ruse found some confidence. More than three minutes since the last field goal for the Tigers. Both free throws rattle in. LSU by four with one minute to go in the first half. Mitchell weaves around the, the pick. Kind of got caught off balance there, too deep. This is Williams, kicks it right side. 
Hill leaves it, drops it off beautifully, and a foul is called. And that's going to put Justice Williams at the free throw line. Take another look here as you watch the drive into the paint. Miller was in the corner to the right of your screen, but he decides to dump it off right there in the lane. Williams draws the foul and go to the free throw line. Justice Williams is a 6'4 sophomore from Philadelphia. Two points on the night for Williams. Now three. Half a minute to play in the first half. Offensive rebound, some great work being done. KJ Williams just keeps at it, doesn't he? He is tall and he is thick and moves very well for a 6'10 guy with 250 pounds. That's double digit rebounds for him already. He has 10 on the game. I know he's disappointed that he couldn't get the basket to go in. He'll try to earn it at the line. Six points on the night, but what great hustle under there between two blue jerseys for him to get it not once but twice before he got the foul. Ten rebounds, six points in the first half. And you are right. He is thick. He went after that offensive rebound like a kid chasing a meatball. <laughs> The Ruse can take the last possession. Ten seconds to go. Mitchell all the way in, left hand, good. Nice move by Raquandas Mitchell with 2.9 seconds to go. And the Ruse played that one very nicely, Victor. Yeah, and it was a nice hesitation dribble at the top of the key. It took that one little hesitation dribble. He got the de defense to stop and then pull court and see if they can get anything out of this. Hill pulls up, takes the really deep shot. It is good up the window. That one from what, 30, 35? But four players approaching double figures, and LSU and White owns the ball first as we get the second half started in the Meritage Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Great to have you with us. Victor Howe, Len Rollins with you here in game one. Thank you for spending some time with us. Tigers come out and shoot three. LSU, Jalen Reed and Kate Brown, but I think the foul was on the man that was guarding. Hill. And that would be that's uh, Jeff LSU though retains possession again so two shots two misses but a couple of offensive retainment. Here's Miller. So tries to split the defense kicks it out. Another three ball out. Victor, that's three threes in a row coming out of halftime. Oh, big alley oop. Can't finish though. Well, they try to go to the man we talked about, Luke Cable, and that time just came up a little short on the alley oop attempt. Miller fakes the three, works inside, loops one up and in. Adam Miller started 31 games for Illinois. And LSU leads 43-34. First Tiger in double digits now as he has 10. This Ruse team has done a really nice job with entry passes and using the size and the mobility of two or three big guys down low. Yeah, they've taken advantage of LSU's man-to-man -man defense without any help or without putting pressure on the ball. You see that time just throwing it up. Three Tigers converge on it, but by the time they get there, it's too late. That ball was already gone into the post. And Ngandu takes it up strong. 
earns away to the free throw line. That's his first bucket tonight. The free throw does not complete the three-point play. Justice Hill grabs the rebound. LSU by seven. And Justice Hill finds a teammate for an all-alone flush. K.J. Williams was on the receiving end. The two guys who know each other very well from doing that all those years at Murray State. Just driving the lane, caught the Ruse defense standing still, and K.J. Williams puts it home. That's 14 field goals and 10 assists leading to those 14 field goals. That's a high number. Miller for three from a long way away. Got it anyway. Look, get used to that, LSU fans. Get used to 44. Teams are going to learn very quickly. You cannot leave him alone like that. He is a sharpshooter from deep. 48-36. Getting some guys to come from him in Murray State, put a roster of 17 players together. And he was excited about getting into action tonight to see how they would do now. After all that work and get everything ready, let's get him in action and see how they'll do. LSU has opened its biggest lead in the first couple of minutes of the second half. Mitchell on the weave. Hands it off to Allen. Allen survives the bump. LSU really locking it down defensively, but Allen forces his way in, and one five scores against the other. That was Shermari Allen against uh, Mawani Wilkinson, and really nice ball control and strength going up to lay it in. Hill in the lane, kicks it out. Williams from Miller. What a pass by Miller and K.J. Williams had great position, opened it up to receive the pass at just the right moment. And the resulting bucket was an easy layup. Just a little bit of patience, waiting for that opening, and he found it, zipped it in the middle. Shot clock at six. Allen cut off, way short. Three ball in the air. Lots of contact. The defender fell down, but no whistle, and it's going to go back to LSU. Once again, LSU caught the ruse. Not very aware of where the shot clock was. They threw that in the corner with three to go, and he had to force that one up. Not only was it short, but it was wide right at the side of the back door. Have you noticed the choreographed clothing that the LSU coaching staff is wearing? The white sneakers, the khaki pants, and the white pullover. All of them were in that. Even Sean Eddy, the trainer. Allen is fouled as he goes to the rim. He'll step to shoot a couple of free throws. There's a look at that uh, choreographed ensemble. Those coaches were working it this afternoon. They all had their responsibilities on the defensive end, working the guys in the post. Getting everybody ready for tonight's debut. Kansas City is now 10 for 14 at the strike. LSU is 11 for 17. Allen with five points tonight for the Ruse. He had 14 in that loss to Lincoln on Monday night, 7 of 13 shooting. Promise Idiaru looks a bit gimpy after he fell down, down there flexing his knee. One of the, uh, one half of the twin combination from Germany. Hill splits the defense. Passes up a shot at the free throw line. And that one was touched last, I think, by the Ruse. That'll stay. Jalen Reed has that opportunity again. He might want to just think about taking it straight up. Wanted to dribble towards the basket, get to the rim. His defender was right there and didn't give him any space. That's kicked away. 20 on the shot clock. 16-25 to play in game one. 
LSU's lead is 11. The biggest advantage of the night has been 12. Gonna have to hurry, they finally get it in. And surviving the contact and scoring is Adam Miller. 15 for him. That's saved, but it's taken by LSU. Hill leading the two-on-two two offensive break. Yep, offensive foul. That's his third. I was wondering if Miller, who was running with him, was going to bleed out to the outside and maybe go set up at the three-point line. Instead, he stayed on the right side, went down the lane, kind of narrowed the passing lane to see if he would dish it off, and instead... Justice Hill decided to take it all the way, and he drew the contact, and they called the offensive foul. So LSU cannot convert the fast break opportunity. And the Tigers will peel back defensively with a 52-39 lead. Miller digging in in backcourt, trying to take it away from Mitchell. This for three, no by Mitchell, and a whistle and a foul. And we will step aside here and come back and sort it all out. 15-51 remains in the game. LSU 52, the Kansas City Ruse 39. You mentioned that he's uh, how good he is from the outside, too. He led all Big Ten freshmen in three-point shooting with 52 made three points he's defending right now and a foul called on a three-point shot the foul is called against Miller or yes no I beg your pardon against Wilkinson against Wilkinson and it's going to be a three shot opportunity for Andrews you don't want to foul a three-point shooter anyway but especially with this team look at how hard that one hit off the backboard that was going another eight or nine feet if the glass isn't there. Look, I give the Roos credit. They're at least trying. They're two of 16 from three-point land. It's not like they're finding any efficiency, but, boy, they got no problem jacking them up. They shot very well as a team last year from three-point range, but didn't have much success in game one, and they're not having any success in game two to this point. Where are they finding success, and why is this just an 11-point game? That's because points in the paint. Their bench has scored 10 points to LSU's 5, but they've scored 20 points in the paint, which is better than what LSU's been able to do. Hannibal comes back into the game for the Tigers. The lead is 10 with 15.43 to go. Great pass on the inside. That's why LSU was so successful early. Look how crisp that pass was from Miller on the outside straight to the lane at the block for K.J. Williams, who's able to just jump, turn around, and lay that thing in. 13 points for K.J. Williams in his LSU debut. Turnaround three ball comes up a little bit short. Rebound pulled off by Williams. This is Miller, spinning, kicks it out. Long three from straight away on line, but a little bit lengthy by K.J. Williams. He'll take the three, and he's not a bad three-point shooter. He has scored as many as 39 points in a game as K.J. Williams. That was against Tennessee State, and he's had 16 rebounds in his career in a game. Four times. He's hit not a bad three points. He shot 33% from the line, or from behind the line last year. And in his fourth season, had 82 made three pointers. LSU by a dozen again. That's nicely done by Shamari Allen, who hung in the air a long time, waved that ball around, and finally got clear. Two Roos go down. One Tiger is on the floor. And a foul against Kansas City. Trey Hannibal earned his trip to the free throw line with this one. Was that Mitchell on the foul? I think it was. 
Hannibal shooting free throws. And the foul was on Idiaro. Uh, Idiaro, promise. I take your word for it. Hannibal looking to convert the second free throw as well. And LSU's lead is 12 again. Hits those free throws, and LSU with picking up the pace has hit six of its last eight field goals. is at the rim. Tigers rebound. Here's Hannibal. Has a two-on-one opportunity. Offensive foul. He took it a little too deep. He had a clear two-on-one advantage and instead chose to take it himself and went into the defender on a 50-50 call and it went the Ruse way. And once again, Miller was down there on the fast break for two-on-one. You're going to see it's off to the left side of your screen. Could have easily gone to him. Hannibal tried to do his best to go around that. No contact was coming but tried to go wide of it. Andrews just stood there to take the contact but that would have been a much easier play to attack and then drop it off because Miller was standing there just wide open coming down the floor with him. And Derek Fountain was on a trailer play as well. Tigers will have an opportunity here. Two on three. That's scooped up. The follow shot is good. That one Goes down for LSU on the hustle followed by Justice Williams. The Roos are having trouble connecting. LSU trying to run. That's off KJ Williams. Just off his fingertips. Might have been a defensive touch in there as well. Drew's starting to struggle now on the offensive end. Just one of the last seven. You can see LSU's trying to pick up that pace a little bit. The intensity starting to crank up a little more on the defensive end and trying to pick up a heavier pace on the offensive side. 58-40. The difference here, though, is what you've seen in the second half where LSU has extended this lead. The Roos are just 3 of 10 from the floor. LSU 7 of 13, including a three-pointer. And the Tigers right now have a 15-point advantage in three-point scoring. Fifty-eight forty-four LSU. Thirteen minutes to play. Allen uses the pick. Ball nearly taken away. Allen retrieves it. Fakes right. Dribbles left. Gets by Williams. Shovels it down low. Foul call. Count the bucket. And a free throw coming. And the foul called against LSU's Derek Fountain. Yeah, and the difficulty with Fountain getting that is because he did such a good job at the top of the key. You're seeing the end of the play when he makes his way back down in the block. And you see him leave his feet and draw the contact. But he did everything right just before that shot. He hedged up top, went down, deflected the ball, almost had the steal, did everything right, and then got back down the lane to try to help out. But then he jumped up and went airborne and couldn't control and get the body contact. And Promise Idiaru was able to survive that contact and softly nestle at home, and he'll be at the line for a three-point play. Fountain's one of those also that is new to LSU from a different school, having played two seasons at Mississippi State, so certainly familiar with the SEC. As he makes his way over from Starkville. Nine points now for Promise Adiaru. Williams with a snake-like dribble. Throws up a short teardrop shot and hits it. Justice Williams with seven. Three comes up short. Promise Idiaru left it a little bit shy. 
Three ball, right corner, rattles home. I'm going to tell you one that's not going to come up short. Adam Miller. Eighteen for Miller. How many of those from from distance? Well, he's made six field goals and four of his six are from long range. Three rebounds, a couple of assists as well. Allen pull up jump shot, knocks it down from the free throw line. Miller with a looper. Can't get it to go. It's tipped around a couple of times, and here come the Ruse trailing by 14 with 11 minutes and 16 seconds to go. KJ Williams was backing up but playing pretty solid defense as well. And we'll take a timeout right here with 11 12 remaining in this game. It's the first seconds to go. And play remains stopped as uh, the floor gets mopped. And we're set to go. The Ruse have it. Andrews dumps it. Nice layoff down low. And a foul called on LSU's Jalen Reed. The angular freshman from Jackson, Mississippi. He stands 6'10". Jeff Ngandu just got to his position before Reed could cut him off. Had the better angle. That put Reed on his backside. When he tried to take it up, Reed did nothing but foul him. M-G-A-N-D-U. That's the last name, Ngandu. This young man out of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a 6'8 freshman. We talked about the languages that they speak. He knows French, Swahili, Lingala, Luba, and a bit of Spanish. Wow. On top of the English. Wow. Five and a half languages, let's call it that. I know one foreign language. It's a stomach growl. <laughs> Williams lays it off low. And a blocking foul is going to be assessed against Tyler Andrews. That's his third foul. That ball hit about five pairs of hands before it wound up with the ruse. There's a three ball, and Shamari Allen turns with his fist up, hoping that will get his team ignited. He's got 12 points. Yeah, the bench cheering because it's been a minute since they made one now. Three of 19, one of six in this half. <laughs> LSU got a good look by Wilkinson as he split a couple of defenders. Back and take another look at their last basket on the drive in the lane. A lot of happy feet for LSU. A lot of guys leaving immediately on the ball fake. You saw him go airborne and then kick it back to the outside before Allen was able to hit the three. Nagandu picked up his fourth foul. Now back inside the double digits, just down by nine. Yep. Sixty-four, fifty-four. Ten minutes to go. Those LSU's first miss from the line in this half. Now three of four, fourteen of twenty-one overall. Oh, 
really nice defense. And a little loop around the barrel we go. A little swirling fate of hand by Hannibal. He did a lot to make that happen. That ought to be worth three or four points. Yeah, he almost had the highlight play of the game on that missed dunk follow-up last possession, but then he follows it up with the highlight going behind the back baseline across the middle and lay it up in a reverse. Allen taking it right to the rim, but missing as it skids across. And a rebound snared by Hannibal again. Let's go back and look at uh, Trey Hannibal do everything. He turned defense into offense. Yes, indeed. Starts with the deflection. They see out muscled his man to go get the ball and then keeps it alive. And instead of holding it out, decides, I'm going to take it baseline behind the back, hop stiff, underneath, puts it in for two. Woo! Sixty-six, fifty-four, nine minutes to go. LSU by a dozen. This has been a relatively comfortable lead through the first half. I think that was intended to be a pass yeah, it got from deflected. Justice Hill. It got deflected, and then Justice Hill looked like he took a shot to the chops as well. So the pass got deflected for the turnover, then he got hit. And then a foul called on Jalen Reed. Eight forty-five, and we'll be counting after these free throws. Raquandis Mitchell will shoot a couple. He's got thirteen. Shamari Allen has a dozen. By the way, you can see it on the screen. Nine team fouls for LSU, just four for the Roos. So they still have a little breathing room before they send the Tigers to the line. Yep. LSU has no room now. They've been giving up free throws, and they're about to hit 10. Just for if you want to make a little note of that. It's a good point. They'll be getting 48-45 to go. They'll be getting two shot opportunities for the remaining fouls called. Well, 21, 21 free throw attempts for LSU, 23 for the Ruse. They're 19 of 23, LSU 14 of 21. The outcourt shooting specialist, Sam Martin, has checked into the game for the Ruse. He wears number one. Hill loops it up, can't get it. Reed got a hand on it to save it momentarily, but it does go out of bounds, and the Ruse will have it with eight and a half to play and a 10-point deficit. This is a, a, a really big possession for Kansas City right here. Absolutely. Look, they believe they can be here. This is a team that struggled to get to 56 in that three-point loss on Monday night. Here they are in Baton Rouge with eight minutes to go already at 56 and down just 10 when LSU really had an opportunity to sort of separate themselves, having been up by as many as 16. And instead, Kansas City's fought their way back into this. Rebound snatched off by K.J. Williams. Three ball in the air with nobody else around. That one came up a little short from Adam Miller. You know, if Kansas City can cut it under double figures, if they can get it under 10, Victor, you've played plenty of games. It's a psychological lift, isn't it? Yeah, we'll talk more about that after this timeout. But remember when they hit that three, how excited their bench was, and you even mentioned maybe give them a spark. Maybe it's done just that. We'll take a timeout here. 7.51 left in the second half. It's a 10-point lead for LSU. 66 LSU over the Kansas City Roos. With seven minutes and 50 seconds to go. Four on the shot clock. Three ball up, three ball in. Let's go that, back to the question. You, let's go back to the question you asked right before the break about getting some confidence. Now Allen's hit two three pointers. They had two three pointers for the whole game. Two of 19, now he's hit two in the last two minutes. Cutting the lead to seven, and yes, all of a sudden, they're gonna start going in their huddle saying, hey, why not us? This is a new LSU team, a new coach, new squad, why don't we go get this win? And a jump hook from a difficult angle is no good by K.J. Williams, and a pass right off the fingertips of Idiaru. That would have been an easy bucket taken back, however, by Allen. He's working one-on-one, -on -one, lays it up, misses too strong off the window, but there was a foul. 
That's one that should have gone down for the Ruse. They will have some free throw opportunities. Wilkinson committed the foul, and that's number four. Yeah, that was a wild sequence. It starts with them missing the shot, and then LSU getting it back, going down the floor. Justice Hill tries to bounce pass and gets stolen. Then it was a three-on-one. Allen certainly excited and wanted to take it to the basket, but he could have gotten himself a guarantee, too, if he were to look to his left. He had two teammates trailing on a three-on-one situation. Yes, he did. He drops the 16th point. Looking now for a team leading 17. He's now the second leading scorer in this ball game. Miller for LSU with 18. As you mentioned, Allen with 16, maybe 17. Too hard. And perhaps a push-off on the rebound attempt. I think it uh, was promised Idiaru who budged on the rules a little bit. The lead is only six, though, Victor. This is a two-possession game with six minutes and 45 seconds to go. Reverse layup will not fall for Jalen Reed. Three ball up. Three ball comes up short. Mitchell missed it. Outlet pass intercepted by Allen. 4-3. Big rebound. LSU's Hannibal at 6-2. Went up much bigger than that. So you think if the Ruse are going to shoot threes, they might want to look for Allen, number five. They only have four as a team. He has half of them, and both of them will come in the last two minutes. LSU just needs to find some solid possession. There's another turnover. You know, Lynn, you're talking about it's just a six-point lead. This is a great opportunity for not only Coach McMahon, but for the Tiger players. Who's going to step up? Yeah. Right? We've been working together for LSU. We all came together. We've got a brand-new coach, a brand-new system. He has three players on the squad that know exactly how he likes to coach and what he likes to do, having come from Murray State. Here's your chance in a real-life situation against an opponent who's starting to believe they've got a chance to win this. And I can find out who's ready to step up and, and take this over. Well, the Ruse have scored 12 of the game's last 15 points. They're on a 12-3 run. Step back. Up and no good. Here comes LSU. It could stand to get a high-percentage shot. It'll take a three. Uh-uh. And LSU is out of offensive rhythm and has been for a couple of minutes. Call that on K.J. Williams. That's his third. Well, I mentioned I mentioned that from the start of the game. They were in such a good offensive rhythm early in the ball game when they were getting good looks threes. They were moving the ball around. They had that defense for Kansas City sort of running all over the place. And then about halfway through the first half, they got away from that. Started the second half strong, built a 16-point lead. Now they've gotten away from it again. This game is getting slippery. Allen racks up 600 points on that pinball shot, and it drops through. 95% of the audience is going, what's a pinball? <laughs> Allen in and out. Boy, every miss is critical was, now for both teams. I was going to say, he just went to the free throw line twice, missed two free throws in those two visits. Just think of what that could have done, cut it to a three-point game. It's a five-point advantage for the Tigers. Miller steps inside, finds Fountain underneath. He lost it on the way up. Was he fouled? Yes, he was. Great look here by Miller. Watching the lane, you see him roll off the screen. Three defenders come to the ball. Great bounce pass by Miller to find Fountain coming down the lane. He just couldn't get it to go in, but he gets himself fouled and goes to the free throw line. That's a no rotation free throw by Derek Fountain. You know, you were talking about uh, Shamari Allen. He's got 17 points. 15 of those have come in this half. This has been a 15-point eruption in as many minutes. He's put this team on his back. We've seen some forced shots the last couple times down the floor, including a couple of three-pointers. That's what I was saying. They might want to be looking at Allen. He's got the confidence right now. Goes with the first two points of the night for Derek Fountain. Allen swings it left side. And the ball is just lost out of the hands of Raquandis Mitchell.
He just ran off without it. LSU will take it. Five minutes to play. Hannibal feeds it off to Fountain and Derek erupts for the dunk. The 6'10 junior from Holly Springs, Mississippi. One of their better offensive possessions, certainly in the latter part of the second half, maybe the entire second half. Chris Ball movement went from one side to the other, then you find the man breaking down the baseline for the easy two. Allen's three ball, way strong. Rebound hits the deck, picked up by K.J. Williams. That's good job slowing it down. Mm -hmm. The lead is nine for the Tigers. This is Hill. Hannibal lost it, but was able to tip it out for a three ball, and it rims out by Williams. The big guy, K.J. Williams, almost got that one to go down. And that one would have uh, maybe nailed down the crate. Just a second three-point attempt in the ball game. Hasn't hit one yet. 70-61 to 61 LSU, and we will take a timeout. 3.47 to go in game number one for the LSU Tigers. LSU's biggest lead has been 16. That came about eight minutes ago. This is almost a must-score possession for the Ruse. That rims out that step back deuce from the free throw line by Mukaba. Hannibal takes it strong, lost it. It's tipped around a couple of times. He'll missed it. Mitchell lobs it up for the running flush by Shamari Allen. Of course, Shamari Allen has just put his team on his back here in the second half. Didn't even look like he was going to make that. Like he jumped earlier, the pass was low, and somehow he got that to go in. It's an amazing effort by Allen, who now has 19 on 6 of 15 shooting. Oh, that's not a good pass at all. Right to the defender. LSU a, a bit sloppy with the possession that they needed to run some clock and be crisp and efficient. Lead is only seven. It could get to four. Well, this is where LSU needs to buckle down. If they can't find their consistency on the offensive end, this is where they need to really strap down here and force Kansas City into some problems on the offensive end. They'll take that turnover. Yep, that is mishandled by Shamari Allen. And Shamari Allen commits his third foul. He's had a nice night, 19. And the vast majority of that coming in this half. Mitchell has 15 in the game right now. Hill shooting one and one. Look, I know this is the first game for LSU and the second game for Kansas City having just come off a disappointing three-point loss to Lincoln. But I'll say this for the teams in the Summit League. This Kansas City team has 11 freshmen on the team. That's third most in all of NCAA. If they start playing consistently with this type of effort, teams in the Summit may want to just be on alert. It's been very impressive what they've come here on the road to do tonight against LSU. Justice Hill has 11 points now. A three ball is online, but a little bit long. Two big guys joust for the rebound. They both get up, but not very quickly. And if you're the ruse, you need to identify your three-point shooter, and he's wearing number five. We get close to the two-minute mark. Hill dribbles from one side to the other. Hannibal's got it. Hannibal was fouled on the floor before the shot. LSU fans get to learn this new roster of players as we take another look. Here's what we've learned about Trey Hannibal tonight. He is not afraid of contact, and he can take it strong to the basket. We saw him go up for that missed alley-oop, or that missed dunk putback earlier, and then the behind-the-back spinning layup that he had. He is built solid. He takes it strong to the basket. He's not afraid of contact. Well, Promise Idiaru has just fouled out 
after that whistle, nine points, ten rebounds for the freshman from Germany. Hannibal now with a couple of important free throws for the Tigers. is the ally of the LSU Tigers. Shamari Allen still dribbling it. That's knocked away by Fountain momentarily and then picked back up by LSU's K.J. Williams. Good help defense there, Victor. Causing the dribble into some trouble then a nice job for LSU. Well, for the moment at least, I was going to say, just holding on to possession. That shot goes in. An acrobatic effort by Justice Hill. It came with 15 on the shot clock. 74-63, LSU by 11 now. 65 seconds and counting. Andrews hands it off. Shot clock all the way down to seven. Mitchell takes the three, and it skids off the rim, and now LSU will walk it up. And the Tigers have this one in hand, 74-63, 42 seconds to go. 20 on the shot clock. Justice Hill will hold the ball as long as he's able. LSU by 11. The alley-oop off the hand of Hannibal. Tigers get it back. And we'll just run out the clock. Nice win in the debut for Matt McMahon. Certainly things to work on. He'll admit that. He knew that coming in. Certainly a tip of the cap for the effort by the Kansas City Roos and the way they came to Baton Rouge to play tonight. But nice win for the Tigers to open up the season for Coach McMahon. So it's over. And game one in the McMahon era is in the win column. LSU never trailed in.